All right. Well, as you are hopping in, if you can have your video on, uh, we would love for you to do that. Uh, would love to remind you also, if you don't mind, go ahead and put yourself on mute. There will be a place to engage. Um, and so, but just to get a nice clean recording, we do record these for our IEA GLR YouTube channel, because we want you to have all that great access to Dr. Wagner's content that you can watch over and over as you desire. And so just know what you share. We want you to share. You are, it, it is being recorded for public uh, viewing. And oh, so, so watch what you say. That's right, right. Exactly, exactly. Watch what you say. So, uh, but we are grateful to be with you. This is our April cafe. As I was looking back even at our date, Dr. Wagner was with us last year on April 22nd. So we must just need a good dose of Dr. Wagner every April. So we'll just plan on that, Jerry, if you can put that on your calendar for us. Yeah, all right. And, uh, um, but we wanna let you know about a few things that are happening in the Enneagram world. And so I'll drop these in the chat. Don't feel like you have to write uh, ferociously here, but um, the World Enneagram Day is coming up. So mark your calendar for Saturday, May 29th. Had a conversation with Sandy Hatmaker and our IEA Global Organization is planning some ways that we can gather in community. And so they'll be putting mm -hmm. out information soon. But the 29th of May, um, stay tuned. We'll have more information as soon as we receive it. And then the other thing from the IEA Global that we wanna share with you is that they, we are doing, a, they're doing a premium online event, July 16th through the 18th this year. It's called Reaching Across with the Enneagram. Uh, the content is sure to be phenomenal. I'll put a registration link in the chat for that, but mark those dates, July 16th through the 18th. And then we have two IEA accredited certification opportunities that we want you to know about as part of this uh, Great Lakes community. One is the I Enneagram Motions of the Soul with our very own president, Claire Lowridge. It is a training and certification. It is a robust four-day experience. They're offering a both in person and online in June of 2021, this year. So registration is open, claim your spot and let them know uh, how you'll be attending um, Harmony Triad Model. It's just a phenomenal way of looking through the lens of the Enneagram. And then Dr. Wagner is offering through his company, Enneagram Spectrum with Catherine Grant, online trainings both this spring and this summer and so i'll drop a link as well and i know he'll be able to share with us some more details about that training so claire i'm going to turn it over to you i will put those links in and i know that they have not made clickable links available in the chat so you may just want to copy it and paste it to a place where you have those handy Thanks, Erica, very much. And I'm not gonna take a lot of time today because we know whenever we're with Dr. Wagner, it is a masterclass. So we wanna give him all the space and time possible. And um, so just take a breath wherever you are. And uh, you know, Scott and I are actually outside right now. And I don't know how many of you give a thumbs up if you can go outside today. Can you go outside today? Excellent. And if you can't go outside today, just turn something on YouTube that helps you remember that better days are coming. And, uh, and so we just uh, don't really need to give Dr. Wagner an introduction, but check out Spectrum, EnneagramSpectrum.com and look at the books uh, that have shaped us. Um, look at some of the videos that actually give us a way to uh, to understand the Enneagram in its psychological uh, form and also through great humor. Everybody knows that Jerry is the best joke teller you've ever met. So you're never bored in his classes um, because usually he makes the jokes about himself too, which is a lot of fun. And so, and we're grateful that his work with the Enneagram um, also comes to us in the form of the WEPS, the Wagner Enneagram Personality Style Scales. And we recommend that to all the folks that um, we utilize the Enneagram with. And uh, we had a few questions and, and some of you are on the call right now who asked this question. Can Dr. Wagner tell us briefly why he uses the words resourceful and non-resourceful on the WEPS inventory? 
and what we can learn from those two words as we look at our Enneagram styles scores. So welcome, Jerry. And that little easy question, get us started. All right. Uh, so um, I, originally I had on my test, so it measures the good things about each type and the not so good things about each type. So there's a hundred items that go with the high side of the Enneagram style, a hundred items go with the downside of the Enneagram style. I originally called it positive and negative. And so then, well, that sounded, that's not so good. That's too, too negative. So then I did resourceful and non-resourceful. And then I thought, well, no, that's not good either because it's not that neurosis is not resourceful at all. There's some good things there or we wouldn't do it but there's collateral damage. There's some side effects <laughs> that go along with our less resourceful side. So now I'm calling it resourceful, less resourceful. Like it works being a perfectionist or a codependent or a workaholic or you know up and down for a four and, eight, and overly intellectual for a five. All those things work, but there are some side effects that maybe we don't intend. So that's the less resourceful. And to, to make it a little bit more palatable, you can think about the less resourceful side as being taking your good stuff and overdoing it. So it, you exaggerate it, it becomes kind of a caricature of your real self. And, and so, uh, you know, that's a little better than saying, well, that part of you is completely useless or totally crazy. It just, you know, has some side effects that you may not intend. And when we're on the high side of our style, there usually aren't any side effects. It's what makes it kind of a good part of us. So if I think of other things as I'm going along, I'll add that to it, but that's kind of what I had in mind. Yeah, and um, for those who don't know this, uh, Dr. Wagner teaches an entire <laughs> section on working with the, the WAPS inventory in, um, in the second level of his uh, training. So go through level one, then get to level two, and you'll learn about how to take a look at those scores. So Dr. Wagner, thank you so much for being with us today. And um, we're really grateful that you continue to help form us and, um, and not deform us. We're, we're really glad that there is, uh, there is so much, um, uh, there's so much here when we're with you. Just your presence mm -hmm. is a gift to us. And we know you don't want us, you know, uh, going on and on about how wonderful you are, but many of us... Go ahead, you can say some more. Don't stop. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> but the, the gift that you've been to the Enneagram global community and then very specifically to the Great Lakes community um, mm. and the, that used to be Enneagram Midwest, right? Val okay. and Ruthie. And, uh, and so we just, we welcome you and we say, just lay it on us. We, we <laughs> are ready, we are ready. All right, PowerPoints, here we come. Uh, so I, when uh, Claire asked me if I would do something, I thought, well, I don't know, what, what can I do? And a couple of uh, times ago, not the, I think, I don't know when it was, two, two times ago, you had Suzanne Dion who, who finished David Daniel's book. And I thought her presentation was just wonderful. And is, it, can, is it still available for people? Can they go back and check her? Yes, absolutely. It's on our YouTube channel and okay. yeah. So it was about relationships. Uh, so she beat me to that one, but I thought, well, I, a while ago, I did a presentation at the IEA on the five love languages in the Enneagram styles. And just wondering, well, I wonder if the Enneagram styles particularly favor some, some one of these five love languages. So here's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to go through the love languages, and uh, I've stolen all of this uh, off of uh, Gary Chapman's online material. So let us be clear, none of this is mine. I'm presenting it to you as he said it. Um, so so I, some of you probably already know the five love languages, but I, I'll just go through them to refresh your memory or to give you a new memory if you don't know them. Then what I'd like to do is ask the ones and twos and threes and fours, uh, which ones do you prefer? 
And uh, I think Erica said, if we maybe put it in a chat room too. So, so we got a lot of, we got to know a lot of stuff here. We're doing good, serious research here. So uh, it's important to know what type you are. Maybe it has something to do with the wing you favor. So you can say, here's my type. Here's my, here's the wing that I tend to lean towards. Here's my <laughs> subtype. And, you know, here's my social security number. You put that on there, that'd be of interest to us. So what type are you? What's your wing? What's your subtype? Uh, and then you, well, maybe it has something to do with gender, you know? So what, what gender are you? Might have something to do with age. And, you know, by the time we're done, we don't have no, have, have no idea what's contributing to this. But so let's say if you're between, you know, 20, if you're in the 20s, put down a two. If you're in the 30s, three, so we don't want to be too personal here. If you're in the 40s, put a four, put a five for the 50s, <laughs> six for 60s, seven. If you're over 80, you know, don't bother. Although I shouldn't say that, I'm going to be there shortly. So, so we're going to have all this data and information, and out of this will probably come total confusion. But so what? That's what science is all about. So here's this, here are these uh, Enneagram styles. I'm going to put them up here and I will, you know, fade into the background because, you know, we guys don't like to be seen. So here we are. Look at that. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go through the five love languages and you kind of put down what, what's your favorite list them. So favorite, next favorite. So go from one to five and we'll see what happens. There we go. Oh, <clears throat> he starts off by saying, well, love, I don't know if I need to read this. Can everybody see this? Anybody doing this just by phone? Okay. So be needing to feel love, primary human emotional need. I don't think anybody would object to that. But then he makes a distinction between falling in love and real love. So falling in love is kind of, you know, we're born that way. It, it's more a reflex or an instinct or an act. It's not an act of the will. And it's kind of effortless. You just fall in love and you say, well, how did that happen? But then after you uh, fall in love with somebody, then you have to stick with them. And so you now are doing something for the other person's well-being. So their health and growth and development is just as important as yours. So it's, an, it's a volitional act, so you're choosing to do it, and it combines a little reason and thought along with the feeling, emotion, and requires discipline. Those of you who have been in a long-term relationship know that. Okay, so he's got these five different languages. And it, you, <laughs> when I present this to people, usually the one I can't remember is probably the one that I, it's not my language, but here we'll go through each one of these. So words of affirmation, see what that's all about. Quality time, spending time with people, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. So again, uh, the background is uh, <clears throat> most of us learn the language of our parents and later we might learn additional languages. Uh, or in my case, I've learned a lot of languages, none of which I can remember. So uh, you might pick up the love language of your parents or maybe not. And they're different. He says, you know, they're as different as Mandarin Chinese is from English. So it's important to know what your preference is and to know what your partner's preference is or your friends. So he says, we usually don't have the same love language. And we get confused when our partner doesn't understand the way we're trying to speak love to them. It may not be that important to them. So now you've got to figure out what yours is and what theirs is. And it may not be natural to speak a Mandarin for your spouse, unless you grew up speaking Mandarin. So uh, love is something that we need to practice. And he said, it's a discipline. So you've got to learn about your partner's love language and then speak to them in that language. So ways of figuring out what is your love language. 
uh, when you were growing up, how did your parents show you love? What made you feel loved as a child? That might be your primary love language. I don't know where this one fits. I haven't thought about this myself. I grew up in Cincinnati, so Frisch is big boys. You know, whenever my parents brought home <laughs> Frisch is big boys and fries, that's a way to show love to me. All right. Um, so <laughs> when you think about how do you want to show love to another person, what comes to mind for you? So perhaps the way you want to, you know, let someone know that you love them might tell you something about what your favorite love language is. Uh, or it might show up on a negative way. If somebody hurt you or neglected you, maybe they missed your love language. Or maybe they're trying to love you in a way that you didn't particularly want to be loved. So that might give you an insight into what's your favorite language. So how do you express love to others? What do you complain about the most? And what do you request most often? How do you want love shown you? So words of affirmation. So some people like to hear, I love you, you're the best, you're the greatest, you'll do whatever words of affirmation you could get out of somebody, that helps. So insults can leave you feeling hurt and embarrassed and ashamed, but kind, encouraging, positive words give you some light. A verbal compliment, encouraging words. You can do it. Give it a try. Give it a shot. I'm behind you. <clears throat> uh, Bandura talks about self-efficacy, and if we don't have it ourselves, maybe we can borrow it from somebody else. So your coach says, yes. You can run that mile in a day and a half. So just go out there and do it. So, uh, so encouraging people to tap their uh, potential. That's what ones are here for. So kind word, twos are here for. Very good, you got a D this semester. That's excellent, let's celebrate that. So um, see, I told you, you could do it. So when you say something in a kind and tender way to another person, that for them is a way to show them love. A humble word, so love makes requests, not demands. So you can ask someone, here's how I would like you to show you care for me. It's okay. So you need to set a goal to give your spouse or partner a different compliment each day for a month. And <laughs> no repetition. You can't go back and say the same thing again. Oh, so again, here's a summary. Verbal compliments, words of appreciation, statements of affirmation, encouraging words, kind words, words of forgiveness, and written words of affirmation. So that's nice. Write a little note. So here's a little quiz. See if you kind of go along with words of affirmation as your favorite expression of love. Which my partner would send me a love note. Uh, I like to hear my partner say he or she loves me more often. I'd like that. I like it when my partner tells me I look good. <clears throat> I feel loved, especially if you're three. That would really be a nice thing. Hey, you're looking good. Thank you. I know that. Uh, I feel love when my partner tells me you're proud of me, wish my partner would say more assertive things. So these are all words of affirmation. My partner prays these a lot for me. Do you like it when your partner shows some enthusiasm about something you've accomplished? Very good. You put your shoes on by yourself today. Uh, if your parents get complimented, um, you would like them to encourage you and appreciate you more often. So all those kinds of things, words of affirmation. Quality time, the way to show love. Giving the person your full undivided attention. Um, wow, so these days that means putting down your phone because it's it's quite amazing how often two people are together, even at a restaurant, and they're not looking at each other. They're looking at their texts 
They're sending texts to other people. It's quite impressive. So this is non-quality time. Okay, so if you put all that aside and say, okay, this time is just for you. Here I am. So you're being the therapist for 45 minutes. It's uh, someone you're undivided attention, maybe going for a walk, just the two of you going out to eat and leaving your phone at home. Uh, quality time has many dialects. So one's a quality conversation and just listening to the other person and giving advice only if the other person asks for it. Would you like me to give you some advice? No. Okay. So then he gives practical tips for quality time. I'm sure all of you already do this. Uh, maintain eye contact with the person who's talking, not with the TV, not with your phone, not with whatever's going on outside. Uh, don't do anything else. Pay attention to the feelings of the body language. So head, heart, and gut. Don't interrupt. And uh, you might need to do some self-revelation for your partner to feel loved. So that's part of the quality time. This may not appeal to the fives in the crowd, but there it is. So if this is the, your partner's love language, quality time. They just want to spend time with you. Ask for a list of five things that he or she would like to do with you and make plans to do one of them each month for the next five months. That's your homework. Now, it may not be what you want to do, but you're doing what your partner would like to do. Okay. So here are all the things that go with quality time. Give the other person your time. Give the other person yourself your presence. So quality conversation, you focus on what you're hearing, words of affirmation, you're focused on what you're saying. So it might be quality activities. At least one of you wants to do it. You're know, like mowing the lawn. Ah. Uh, and so you're willing to do it. Okay, I'm happy to do what you like to do. We can do it together. So quality time questions would be I'd like to spend time alone with my partner. Uh, I like to travel with my partner, going almost anywhere with my partner. Now, these days, anybody <laughs> could say that. <laughs> Just getting out of the house, I'm happy to do that. Uh, no matter what we do, I love doing things with my partner and just being around my partner makes me feel good. Quality time. I like it when my partner shows interest in what I'm doing. I like it when my partner listens and doesn't criticize. I like it when my partner doesn't interrupt me. I like to watch movies with my partner, as long as you're kind of doing it together. And it doesn't matter where we go, I just like going places with my partner. It's a reminiscent of a nine. Well, I don't care what we do, I just want to do it with you. All right, receiving gifts. Third, if showing love. So the receiver of gifts thrives on the love and thoughtfulness and effort behind the gifts. So if you give the right gift, you know that you have been, you've thought about the other person, you care for them, and uh, you're willing to sacrifice to give them the gift that they, they, you think they would like. And if you miss birthdays, anniversaries, and all that kind of stuff, it's, it's disastrous. Um, I'm laughing because there was an old cartoon, I mean, an ad, commercial, and I don't remember what exactly they were saying, but it, it shows the woman, a uh, young woman, who going through all these cards and just oh, takes one out. No, that's not right. Takes another, oh, oh, no, that's not right. So after about, you know, five minutes, she finally gets the card. This is the perfect card for my boyfriend. So then they show him, he's going through the checkout line and there happens to be some cards, you know, right there by the cash register. So he just grabs one, throws it in the bag. <laughs> and then, and then um, the next scene is she gets this you know, prize that he gave a nanosecond to getting. And she's, oh, this card is wonderful. It's <laughs> just perfect. So you want to be like her, spend some time picking out the gift. Okay. Um, 
so you're giving your partner a, a gift, which is a symbol of your love. It says, I'm thinking of you, I remember you. Uh, it can be, uh, well, as we can see, an expensive gift or um, an inexpensive gift, something that you made, something that you put some effort and time into. Um, an intangible gift might simply be your presence. That might be the gift you can give to the other person. Maybe that's what they need right now. Just a hug. Don't we all? Uh, so if gifts, receiving gifts is your uh, partner's love language, then make a note of what they say they like. And hopefully it won't be too expensive. Oh, I really like that BMW. You say, good. What else do you like? Um, select gifts that you feel comfortable purchasing. Maybe not even wait for a special occasion. Bring some flowers home. Okay. So the heart of love is the spirit of giving. So now these are visual symbols of love. Or maybe you're a musician. So you give your, your friend or your spouse, your partner, a, a, a tune. Here's a, here's a song I wrote for you. Uh, it's, a, it's a sign that you remember the other person. And again, the gifts can be purchased. <laughs> might be found. Here's a stick I found on the way home. Um, I have no idea what the hell that means. A gift, it's, it's found. But anyway, whatever that means. Or it's a gift that you made. Here. Here's a pot that I made for you. <laughs> so it might be physical presence. Your body becomes your symbol of love. Or it might be some gift. So... Here's some questions about whether receiving gifts is important to you. I get surprise gifts from my partner. That's nice. I value the gifts my partner gives you. Even the smallest gift is important. It means a lot to me when my partner gives me gifts I really like. I get excited when opening a gift for my partner. I never, never know what the hell he's going to give me now. I like it when the partner puts some thought into his or her gifts. I look forward to seeing what my partner might give me. I like it when my partner takes a trip, brings me back a little gift. You know, here's a here's a here's a rock from the seashore. Uh huh. Is that it? Is that all you got? Yeah, that's it. Um, I get like it when my partner goes to the store, picks up little things that he or she knows that I like. About, you know, a bottle of good scotch. I couldn't ask for any better gifts than the ones my partner gives me. So you like gifts. All right, acts of service. What can I do for you? So if you can ease the burden of responsibilities on the other person, that could be a nice thing to do. Let me do that for you. Uh, so loafing around the house would not be demonstrating acts of service. But if you can find ways to help your partner out, good deal. So actions such as cooking a meal, setting a table, washing the dishes, sorting the bills, walking the dog, dealing with landlords are all acts of service. Calling up ComEd. So all these things require some thought, planning, time, good. Done with a positive spirit, not grudgingly. Oh, God, I mean, I have to do the dishes again. All these things are expressions of love. You're not doing it out of guilt or resentment. <laughs> so you're not a doormat. You're doing these things as a lover. Oh, so what, what has your partner nagged you about lately? Will you take out the damn garbage? Well, it's not full yet. Just take it out, Leah. So notice that the nag might be a tag. So... Uh, if it, this is important thing that, that you can help out with, take the dog for a walk uh, and maybe or maybe not come back with the dog. You know, we'll see how that works out. Okay. Acts of service, doing things the person would like you to do, helping the other person, what can I do to help and pay attention to requests. And I suppose, you know, if you can honor the request close to the time when they ask it, as opposed to a month or a week later. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Well, acts of service. You enjoy working around the house with your partner. 
you feel love when your partner helps with the laundry, cooks a nice meal for you. Uh, so words speak louder. I mean, actions speak louder than words. So it means it's important when I see that my partner actually backs up those words with some actions. I like it when my partner helps me on projects. Or I like it when they run an errand for me. Keeping the house clean. <laughs> um, and this is Asari's comment on where, where my reading a life. I, I read, um, it's not Ann Landers, it's whoever's in the Tribune you know, giving advice to people. <laughs> Someone was complaining, well, my husband, when he takes the dishes out of the dishwasher, puts about half of them away and leaves the other half on the counter. All right, so acts of service would be put all the dishes away. There you go, okay. And if I'm feeling tired, I like it when my partner says, what can I do? How can I help? Okay, service. Physical touch. Uh, so this isn't all about sex in the bedroom. It might be hugs, might be pats on the back, holding hands, thoughtful touches on the arm. All these are ways of showing excitement. You would be surprised to hear me say this, but as a five, I think my favorite uh, love is physical touch. Nothing says love like a good shoulder rub, you know? Can't beat it. Uh, or a good back massage. All right. Um, so physical touch fosters a sense of security and belonging in any relationship. You know, so just a gentle touch on the arm or the shoulder, reaching out to someone. So uh, hugging, kissing, all these things we're going to enjoy more now that the pandemic is kind of winding down. We can actually touch one another again and not just yell at each other across the room. So uh, love touches don't take a lot of time. And if you were brought up in a kind of a non-touchy feeling environment, you might need to intentionally remind yourself this is what my partner likes. Even though I'm not used to this, uh, it's not the first thing that comes to my mind, but a little hug, a little kiss goes a long way. Okay, so <laughs> while eating together, let your knee or foot drift over and touch you, your partner. Make sure it is your partner though. You don't wanna do it to you know somebody you don't know. Could cause problems. Okay, when we're in crisis, we tend to hug one another. And physical touch is a powerful communicator of love. Um, you can't change events, but we can survive if we feel loved. So uh, for those of you who are therapists and spiritual directors and counselors, it, it used to be okay to hug your client. Now you have to talk to your attorney before you do it. So you, now you have to hold your client in, in your regard. Um, maybe you could hold them, but you know it can be easily misinterpreted. So it becomes tricky in a professional situation. So I hold you in my regard. Uh, so physical touch, holding hands, kissing, embracing, sexual intercourse. All these things are ways to show uh, physical touch. How do you know you would like that as your favorite function? Well, I like more hugs from my partner. I like it when my partner touches me. I feel love when my partner puts his or her hands, arms around me. I like to hold my partner's hands. I like it when my partner sits close to me. I love to hug my partner. So if you're not into hugs, then a way of showing love is to let your partner give you a hug called exposure therapy, where you get over your fear of it. Just put some more. I love it when my partner rubs my back. Yes. I never get tired of my partner's kisses. Yes. Uh, I can't help but touch my partner when he's close by. I love having sex with my partner. Can't keep my hands off my partner. I love embracing my partner after we've been apart for a while. So all these ways are ways of showing love. So I'm taking this from Gary Chapman's book, The Five Love Languages. And he just go on online, the five love languages, and you'll see where I took all this material from. Again, 
None of this is mine. This is all Gary Chapman's. Uh, if you want to read my stuff, Enneagram Spectrum and Personalities, 25th anniversary. I can't believe it's been that long. I can't believe that I'm still talking about the Enneagram after all these years. Aren't you sick of it yet? No, nope, not yet. And nine lenses on the world. So here's your ask. Believe it or not, I've now run out of PowerPoints. So I would ask you to think about rank order these five love languages. What's your favorite down to the one? Eh, you don't think about that much. So words of affirmation, quality time, gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. So what's your Enneagram style? What's your subtype? What's your favorite wing? And you know, maybe gender makes a difference, male, female, uh, um, in between. Age might make a difference. Maybe it's changed when you were younger. Maybe you have a different preference now, or maybe they hold up all through your life. We don't know. So, you know, here, you know, so here they are again, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, words of affirmation, physical touch. So, um, can we now, so if there's a, um, a way for you to put that in the chat room and then we'll collect them and we'll make them available to everybody. But just for the fun of it, because we've got time, thank God I left a little time. Could we hear from the ones? And there may be absolutely no correlation between the five love languages and your Enneagram type, which is fine. So we'll enter this in the Journal of Insignificant Results. We have now proven that there is no correlation between these, in case you were wondering. This is our contribution to science. <laughs> Don't bother going down this trail, it doesn't work. So do we have any ones here who are with us? Can you unmute yourself or raise your hand? There's a, somehow you can put your hand up. I don't know how that works. So Michael put his hand up. What Are you a one? Yes, first of all, it's good to be here. I'm signed up for the Motions of the Soul in June. Looking forward to it. Okay. First time at the meeting. You're very good. Yes, I am a, I'm a one. How much did Claire pay you to say that? Oh, never mind. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, words of affirmation. Here I am uh, uh, giving a word of affirmation. So uh, okay. uh, again, and, I, I mentioned that I've been married 47 years. Uh, very wow. fortunate. Yeah. Uh, my wife is a two. Yeah. Uh, we're both uh, self-preservation is our uh, primary uh, subtype. Yeah. Uh, I'm a uh, wing nine favored, and yeah. I, I can't say for my wife, probably a three uh, yeah. would be her uh, wing. Okay. Uh, so words of affirmation, acts of service would be second. The other three would really be further down the list. Those two are, are yeah. highest. Yeah, very good. And how about hers? What does she like? Uh, the same. Uh, oh, that worked out nicely. Yes, and okay. I checked with her. She's right uh, next door. Here. Oh, I see, good. <laughs> so when you're dating, you can have this as a checklist. You know, you could ask the potential partner, you know, well, what are your, what do you like? And, you know, well, that's no good. Besides asking, well, how much money do you make? Okay, do we have any other ones? So we now got words of affirmation. Any other ones here? Hey, Jerry, this is Wendy Roby. Yes, Wendy. And I'm a type one and I am a physical touch. Okay, what subtype? Do you know? No. Want to make one up? So you can be either <laughs> self-preservation, social, or sexual, or we'll tone that down, intimate or one-on-one. -on -one. We don't know. I, I have no idea. Okay. Are you going to take- uh, Claire can chime in if she thinks she knows. <laughs> are you going to take Claire's training? You'll learn about Claire it. Can, Claire can uh, probably do a better guess for me. What would you all say, right, Claire? Right. Well, I, we do, Maybe self-preservation. Maybe okay, self maybe down to self-preservation. Maybe. I just want you to know that screws up my theory so far, but I'll put it down <laughs> with a big question mark. The way I do research is if it doesn't fit my hypothesis, I just leave it out. Okay. Any other ones? 
<laughs> uh, all right. How about some twos? I need twos. What, what's your favorite love language? So we heard from uh, Michael about his wife is a two and she, words of affirmation. I'll go. Yeah. So um, I'm a two, uh, kind of balanced wings. Yeah. Intimate subtype. Yeah. Uh, the first one would be quality time. Okay. Yeah. And the second would be acts of service. Mm, okay. And then kind of the others tie. Okay. So those are the biggies. The two biggies. Yep. Which kind of make, I mean, it kind of fits. It's kind of what you would think about the it too. The relational thing. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. All right. Any other twos? Okay, go with this Jerry. I'll go next. I am. Yes. So I totally agree with Ruthie. Uh, we're the same. Um, I'm a two. Um, I have balanced wings. And um, my subtype is um, the intimate. And I've got the same thing. Really? Uh, quality time as top and uh, physical touch. That's the and second also, one. Also, as I'm older, yeah. As I'm older, I really need a lot of help. So I really need a lot of acts of service. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Right. You know, not so much giving it, but receiving it. Yes. It. Yes. All right. Well, it's time to outsource a lot of those activities. You know, like cooking and shopping and yeah. cleaning. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other twos? I'm a two social, right. two social, sexual kind of pretty even on that. And okay. um, but self-preservation is my blind spot, definitely. And my husband, it's interesting. We're both the same on on each of the love languages. We did we did a thing with a whole group of married couples about 20 years ah, ago. Yeah. And it's interesting because all the guys were acts of service and all had wives yeah. who were quality times and words of and they're yeah. like, who would think yeah. quality so time words of words. But yeah. my husband was just words of affirmation, quality time, and he got into the car and said, I just feel like tiptoe through the tulips. He was so different from the other guys in the group, but we're exactly that and we're pretty even on that. Um, so words of affirmation and quality time. Yeah, and the other ones are just kind of probably yeah. acts of service. Those okay. are less important. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. And you know, so we'll collect. We'll hear. You know, we in the chat room. We'll have all this info, maybe. Uh, how about the threes? We may have to keep going here. Um, any yeah, threes in the crowd? I, I'm a yes. sexual three, fifty-nine. Uh, balanced wings and definitely words of affirmation and quality time are the top two. Ah, receiving okay. gifts is the very last. What's last? Receiving gifts. Ah, okay. Well, that's good to know. So we don't have to buy anything for you then. Unless it's what I bought you. Oh, you want one of them? <laughs> uh -huh. Shh, quiet. <laughs> That was really good scotch. I still have most of it too. <laughs> okay. Words of affirmation, quality time. Interesting. Okay. Um, I'm a uh, self-preservation three. Yes. With balanced wings. Yes. And um, my two top ones would be quality time and physical touch. Mm -hmm. um, and I agree with Claire that um, gifts would be my last, except for what she gave you. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> well, I'm not sharing, so so there. <laughs> Damn that's it! Right. Giving Damn that's it. right. That's right. <laughs> Giving gifts is the bottom of my list. <laughs> All right. Any other threes? So so far, we're we're proving that there's absolutely no correlation between enneagram type and quality in the love language, which is fine. Anything else? Any other threes? Going once, going twice. All right. How about the fours? We got some fours. Now you now just guess before the fours speak. Here's what I bet they say. 
And now we'll have all the fours confound our stereotypes. We got any fours here? Beth. Um, hi, I am a four with a five wing self-preservation and yep. my top two are physical touch and mm -hmm. acts of service. Ah, okay. Hmm, okay. <laughs> screwed up my theory already right, answer, <laughs> yeah. any other any other fours i'll share angela, angela. hi my name's angela uh, i'm a type four social in mm -hmm. my late 50s and my top uh love language is quality time followed by words of affirmation okay and what do you want to hear people say i see you hey oh. what do you think I want to be noticed. Yeah. Okay. I see you. I, I think. Shoot. I, uh, I listened to a TED talk. Of course, I can't remember who was giving the TED talk. It was about empathy. And uh, at, she was saying <coughs> that we greet, we greet each other. We say, hi, how are you? Uh, how do you stand? You know, como estas? How do you stand? How are you doing? In Africa, the greeting is I see you. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Okay. Any other fours? No, two out of three don't agree. Any other fours want to say anything? All right. How about the fives? Speak up, fives. Uh, Michelle. Um, I am a five wing six self-preservation. Um, I would prefer acts of service and quality time. I do not like to be touched for the most part. Mm -hmm. And I am always very uncomfortable with receiving gifts. Less, I can give gifts much better than I can receive them. Mm -hmm. uh, receiving them makes me nervous. Why? Because then you have to give a gift uh, back? No, because if there's like some expectation that I will love it or I don't want to make a person feel bad if I'm not expressive enough about <laughs> the gift or even if I do love it, it still makes me nervous that that I'm not going to give them the reaction they're looking for. I, I see. Okay. And so, <laughs> and quality time, like how, how long do you want that quality time to last? Five um, minutes, 10 so minutes? It depends, but like quality time with my husband is that we both sit in a room together and read a book. You know, that's quality time. <laughs> that would be a FISE version of quality time. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> yeah, you could be in the same room, but don't bother me. Yep, and we're like reading it. our own book. <laughs> I see. All right. <laughs> any other any other FISE? Mm, come on now. Come out, come out, come out, wherever you are. Not happening. Well, so I'm a, what did I, I'm a self-pres five with a six wing two. And I like uh, physical touch. And I think gifts, I was thinking back when I was little, I always liked it when my aunts gave me gifts, you know, gifts giving, particularly if they're expensive gifts. <laughs> so I, again, I'd rather receive them than give them, but it's all right. All right, any other fives? <clears throat> Remaining silent. All right, how about sixes? And there, are, as you can see, there are absolutely no right or wrong answers to this, but this is good. I'm a six. Um, oh, where are you? Daisy. Uh, six wing seven, yeah. uh, self-preservation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I fit your stereotype because I am um, acts of service. Yep. And I'm very, um, I'm very suspicious of words of affirmation if they don't, aren't backed up by actions. Oh, so, you know, so give an example of that. Like uh, if somebody says, oh, Daisy, you look good today. What, what action would they do to back that up? Take a picture of you or? No, it's not like that. It's, it's more like uh, if you, if you, um, you know, like it's, if you're effusive in your, in your words, but you don't back it up by, 
um, you know, valuing what I say or what I'm doing, that kind of thing. So it's, mm. you know, you can't say, I love you. I love you. I love you. And then never do anything for me, you gotcha. know, or not support yeah. me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you want that backed up with the, well, that's the old acts of service. Prove it. Yeah. Action, not just words. Okay. Right. Okay. Any other sixes? I'll Erica. have up. Erica, yeah. Who's talking here? Kathy. Where'd Kathy go? I don't oh, know. Oh, there you are. I, sorry. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. I'm a six, um, seven wing, and I don't. I don't know or remember my subtype, uh -huh. um, but my top one is physical touch. X of service is at the bottom. Really? And I figured this out after being in therapy when I realized that all the time my dad was changing my oil and taking care of my car, he was saying, I love you. Yeah. And I did not feel loved or uh -huh. by my dad. So kind of figured it out by um, from that. So you would rather have your dad give you a hug than and change the oil? Yes, and quality time. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that would be your second quality time? Yep. Okay. And then words of affirmation, gifts, and uh, acts of service. Yeah. All right. Great. Uh, Erica. All right. Well, I'm uh, type six and... When I took the WEPS originally, it had a five wing, but I'm learning to uh, lean over to that seven and oh. um, some harmony in both spaces, but likely self prez. Um, my top two uh, quality time is number one. Um, words of affirmation is number two. Interestingly enough, um, when I first took the profile with five love languages, acts of service was next. I would say physical touch probably has moved up. Um, even as my safety and security with mm. relationships has increased. Mm -hmm. And so that was interesting to me. And then gifts would be my last. Um, but I resonate mm. with what Daisy said, you know, Daisy, the word when you're speaking was congruency. And so uh, with quality time, words of affirmation, actions and words matching is really important. So I see you and I hear you when you said that, Daisy. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, ah. Erica. Yeah. And I wonder, Erica, because you're saying receiving gifts, but you are like a fabulous gift giver. So is it different, the receiving or the giving? I enjoy giving gifts. Um, you know, I resonated some with what Michelle says. Um, I, I mean, it's always nice. Like gifts are, I appreciate them, but I think too, yeah, that expectation of what's my reaction? Is my face going to match how I'm feeling or am I going to, you know, um, yeah, have, have that, um, the response that really reciprocates what, I, what I'm feeling. Mm. Okay. Well, so you were leaning over to the seven. Let's hear from the sevens. <clears throat> we got some sevens here or out having fun. So Rosemary. I'll, I'll share. Um, okay. I, I have a sister, Lynn, who loves food. And she always says, I love everything about food. I love to shop for it. I love to look at it. I love to wash it. I love to touch it. I love everything about it. And I kind of feel like that about words. I'm a wordsmith. I love to talk. I love to listen. I love to write. Uh, I love to play word games on the computer. So it makes total sense to me that words of affirmation are mm -hmm. important to me. Yeah. Uh, quality time is the next because I kind of feel that in that quality time, if words are important to me, I will get my needs across and met. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, hopefully met. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and then I mean, because I'm a seven, of course, I love all of these and want all of them. But <laughs> but but really receiving gifts is last. Um, I think mm -hmm. it's fun. I like to get a gift. But I'm much more about um, that show me kind of thing, that show mm -hmm. me, you know, so the service. So I put, I ranked mine. I, I am a seven with an eight wing, 16 yeah. female. And I am, just in case you didn't know that I was a female. And I am, and I, one, two, four, five, three. So, so it was the words of affirmation, quality yep. time, then acts of service. All right. And, and, and what's a uh, subtype? I am a social seven. Social. All right. Okay. Thank you. Great. Uh, Art, you have your 
Yeah. What, do, what do you got to say for yourself? Yeah, uh, sexual seven, uh, 66 years old. Um, and uh, weighing most of my life, I think it was more eight. But for some reason, at this stage of life, uh, the six is coming more into play. Yeah, amazing what a little uh, pandemic will do for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so mine is physical touch first, um, quality time second, and then words of affirmation third, acts of service fourth, and receiving gifts five. Hmm. Okay. Nobody likes gifts in this crowd. All right. Okay, physical touch, quality time. All right. Any other sevens? Seven, seven, seven. Going once, going twice. Okay, how about eights? Got any eights in the crowd? Uh, no eights? Come on. Hmm. I wonder where they went. Well, we'll just make up something. <laughs> we'll just make up something. Wait, here's what I think the eights would do. All right. How about the nines? I know we got one nine here sitting next to a three. But Dustin has his hand up first. Dustin. Yo. Dustin. Yeah. Um, so yeah. physical touch has always been my number one. Uh, I'm, I'm a nine wing one. And physical touch in terms of my um, preferred mm -hmm. love language. Mm -hmm. And then probably acts of service and quality time are are, you know, 60% down from there, tied for okay. second. Yeah. Uh, subtype, you know? I am I go back and forth. I feel like I lean towards social. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. All right. <clears throat> other nine. Thanks. Thanks, Dustin. Physical touch, access service. Any other nines? Scott? Hi, Conrad. I'm, oh, go Where's ahead. Conrad? Conrad, good. I'm a nine wing one, um, probably one to one, maybe social somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. And I would say that earlier in my life, it would have been touch, but yeah. uh, especially the last few years, and maybe even since getting further into the Enneagram, I've recognized words of affirmation are, are primary. Okay. Uh huh. And what would you like to hear people say? Why, Conrad, you're um i don't know just this morning my boss told me that i was doing a great job and you know that was that was really powerful for me things Good. along those lines of, okay that i'm uh i'm contributing well um uh, that i i have something to offer you know wow. seeing me you know that kind of thing that's nice okay it sounds like what a nine would like to hear as opposed to i don't <laughs> yeah, have anything typical, to offer right? i'm not you know i'm not contributing but hey you're doing a good job yeah that i matter you know that's it there you go See, go down to the three. That's what happens. Get all these compliments. Any other yep. nines? Dustin, you uh, still have your hand up. Why is that? <laughs> We've already paid attention to you. But there you go. <laughs> Just merge, Dustin. I thought it would go down automatically. Sorry. <laughs> all right, we see you. Uh, Jerry, I, uh, yes. Scott. Uh, I'm younger than Claire. I'm 58. Uh -huh, I see. A note. Yeah. Um, nine with an eight wing. <laughs> um. Only when he gets me with it. You know, you're going to pay for that comment as soon as we get out of here. You know that, don't you? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, yeah. So uh, I, uh, the acts of service, quality time would be second. Gifts would be last. Um, words of affirmation, third. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, subtype? Subtype will be social. Social. Okay. Depending on what day it is, but today it's social. <laughs> okay. I see. <laughs> yeah, this might be your last day, too, after that. <laughs> Sorry. To, we'll say goodbye to you now. <laughs> So also we I don't know if everybody knows that your your mom passed away just uh, recently, uh, Scott. Yeah, sorry. Yes, thanks uh, for mentioning, Jerry. Yes, she yeah. passed the tenth. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
and his acts of service were in high gear for his mom. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, perfect timing. We just came to the end. We got all the types in except for the eights who refuse to say anything or they're probably out doing yeah, things. Where doing things. Kathleen, for heaven's sake. Hey, and can we ask, I want to ask about fours. I have two really close four friends who I would say gifts are at the top. Uh -huh. That is a love language they use all the time. Mm -hmm. I think to myself, I would never have thought to do that. And I wonder about eights too, because my friend, the eight that's not talking right now, she is one of those people that she'll find something that is a meaningful gift and give that regularly to people. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah. But it kind of looks like, although we'll, we'll, you know, tabble up what people say in the chat room, and, and but it doesn't look like there's any particular correlation between Enneagram type and subtype even. The, the thing I did with the uh, IEA one time, the only thing that kind of stood out with people who identified with the sexual subtype tended to like physical touch, but that's not the case here. So that's what happens when you replicate studies. You never, you know, it doesn't back up what your first uh, experiment did. So um, it looks like whatever, where, wherever this physical touch preference comes from, who knows? It might be temperamental. It might be learned. Or it might, you know, the other thing is, did it, did it, does it change over time? You know, like what you liked when you were little, it's not so important now that you're a little older. Anyway, so, okay, uh, that's all I got. I appreciate getting this information and I'll never do a workshop on the five love languages in the Enneagram again, because why bother? I do have one on the Enneagram and the Myers-Briggs coming up and there's a little bit of correlation there, but not enough to, you can predict one from the other. You know, you can, there's, there's a little bit of, you know, congenial likes, like fours tend to be all feeling. I can't imagine what a thinking four would look like, but there's some. Anyway, there, there's so, a book on Thomas Merton um, that I, it was just recommended to me in my peer supervision group, and I can't yeah. remember what it is right now, uh -huh. but everybody look it up. It's a new book on Thomas Merton, who is a thinking for. Yeah. And um, and so I think that's a, that's interesting. Suzanne Zercher wrote a book about Merton, a, too. Yeah. So, uh -huh, yeah. So she, Suzanne's a four. Mm -hmm. She's not with us now, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. One more Enneagram book I got to put on my shelf now. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's it. I got nothing more to say. I ran out of slides. Um, <laughs> well, you got anything yeah. to say, Claire, besides goodbye? Yeah. Well, I think we can say goodbye, but I also think you've given us something to consider. Yeah. Um, because while this is a little bit of raw data, there may be uh, data that comes up for us when we hang up that's more true, mm -hmm. you know, um, because, uh, yeah, I, I think we're answering things and we're learning about ourselves and we're saying, you know what, that's not really even true anymore. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm at this stage of life or this wing has become more prominent, I'm, I'm hearing those kinds of things. Yeah. And then even the uh, what you said about the pandemic, where all of us have welcomed the self-preservation part of ourselves. Really? Ways maybe that we um, resisted in other times. Um, so I think the data is not yet in. And maybe we could invite um, mm -hmm. you know, this group to consider what might be more true now that you've been able to say something out loud Mm -hmm. And uh, and if there's any data that we can share that that would be helpful, yeah, I think, um, I think that I think that's going to happen here. We're we're going to have a serious Claire, talk. Claire's about to give me some raw data. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, can I share one thing with you? Yeah, I just wanted to say that you know I've been I took Jerry's training like a hundred years ago. It feels like about nineteen twenty oh one. 
And I've been working in this field pretty much since or 2002. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that came out of my mouth one night when I was doing a workshop with regard to your resourceful and less resourceful, and we used to say non-resourceful, now we say that's right. But one of the things that I thought was very powerful about those two words, given that I like affirmations of words, right, are the word resourceful. I always say to people, you're, you're already resourceful, you know, but you're sitting in yeah. your seats because you yeah. want to become more resourceful. But mm -hmm. by resourceful, I mean reconnected to your source. Re oh, that's nice. Resourcing. You are resourcing. Nice. That's nice. And, and I really believe that, like deep down. And so when we're less resourceful, we're just disconnected. We're less mm -hmm. connecting to our source. I like that. And so, yeah, I just thought I'd offer you that since you've offered me so much. Yeah, thank you. I'll use that. I will not, of course, you know, attribute it to you. I'll say, oh, oh here's, here's my latest yes, thought on better, this. You better. You <laughs> better. <laughs> I like that. It's very good. Well, and why All right. don't we just uh, take a, just a last breath and um, be grateful that we can reconnect to our source and, uh, and find ways to live in a resourceful way, mm. even on this day. Mm-hmm. Thank That's you, right. Gary. All right. Thanks, Claire. Thank you. So I'll see you all next April. Okay, next April, <laughs> if not before. Yeah. Goodbye, everybody. Right. Thank you for being here, friends.